Trump, climate change, bars changing the recipe for Iron Brew. It's safe to say the end is nigh. And once the dust has settled, what is due to survive? Telly. Will that be Scotland's legacy? In the event of an apocalypse, I've been charged with raking through Scottish TV from yesteryear to find out what will make the end of days archive. Along with some guest comedians, some victims, and well, you, we are going to find what will help educate the future generations all about Scotland. The rest of the footage will be contemned to telly hell. I'm Billy Kirkwood and this is TV Apocalypse. Work! Neil Bratchpiece and Chris Thorburn. So we've got ourselves some clips. We've got ourselves a clipboard. Buckle up, sweethearts. Things are about to get bumpy. Ready, guys? Let's do this. <laughs> All right, has anybody else already creeped out? <laughs> some say this inspired Pixar's up. <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish equivalent, get it up, you. <laughs> This is like one of those cartoons you used to see on Glenn Michael, ones from Russia. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Scotland to another flight of fancy in our balloon game. Once again, we have three historical characters who will have to debate for their very lives as to which of the three is to survive this game. Our three historical characters... I, pause! Stop by a second! Burns. Has anyone else noticed that clearly he can't give a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he is clearly not, he hasn't even combed his hair right. <laughs> Look at that, that's ridiculous. I've never seen, I think he's stoned. <laughs> <laughs> On history. <laughs> Robert Burns is sponsored by Douglas Knox. Mary Queen of Scots is sponsored by Sharon Thompson. And Toulouse Lautrec is sponsored by Richard Cassidy. He was clearly a man on his knees. <laughs> He's not pretending he's sitting in a chair. My life has been written so often, over 3,000 times in fact. My history has been scrutinised, and my poetry has passed under the eyes of critics so numerous and distinguished that I feel that I have no real need to justify the continuance of my life. I would have thought you wouldn't uh, have been reading it though. Well. <laughs> I will reiterate on a few brief points of my life. I was born, as any good whiskey distiller will tell you, on the 25th of January, 1759. And it is on this date your pen number? that I base <laughs> my first argument for survival. Without my annual festival, whiskey, haggis, and bannock sales would plummet. Was it for a second? <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't even think about the bannock sales. <laughs> what happens with Brexit? Are the bannocks protected? <laughs> I mean, Jesus, I mean, I mean, how many bannocks have you got in the house? Have they got Bannock insurance? I've got a whole basement dedicated to it. Oh, get you, Bobby Big Bannocks. <laughs> we expected transport to be rather more advanced in the 20th century. No matter. Sit down. <laughs> we find ourselves tonight in the unlikely company of this agricultural rhyme maker and this commercial artist at the whim of an optical company previously unknown to us, but bearing the initials BBC. Oh, for God's sake. This balloon, however, seems Clang. incapable of carrying this is three the passengers. Episode take In a moment, <laughs> one of us must sacrifice himself to save the others. Willingly, we would throw ourselves to the earth below. Gladly, this was we would the give our life to save the night at the Apollo. <laughs> is that hang to stop her chewing her leg? It is not ours to give, nor to sacrifice. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> Toulouse Retreat, uh, just sponsored surprised. by his pure hatred for the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what worth to a nation as a woman? I love his accent. Away a country's aspirations as easily as she would brush off a fly. Paris via Shettleston. <laughs> and nation strongly. Well, much as I personally would like to declare a moral dead heat, the marks are such that Mary Queen of Scots, alas, loses her life yet again in the cause of Scotland. And now would she could seem a little more bottled. To lose the trick, kindly stand up. I thought he was. What the hell? Lies! Lies! Im immersion shattered. Lies! I bet he's not even French. 
Well, that's all for this <laughs> evening. Our judges, Thank Robert Mackenzie, and from Edinburgh in Scotland, good night. And that was the balloon game, everyone. <laughs> chairman, you don't hear chairman much anymore. This needs to go into the end of day's archive, or does it? All right, so what do you think? By cheering, if you think we should keep it for generations of Scottish people to come, give us a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it should go into the fiery hell of the apocalypse, give us a boo. boo. Well, I think it's official, Scotland hates history. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Up next, it's around Scotland, and it's exciting because it's going to be a day in the life of a motor patrolman. We follow Sandy, a motor patrolman from Aberdeen in the 1970s. <laughs> Exploring his day-to-day -day job in the city, his responsibilities, and just what it takes to be a policeman in Aberdeen. <laughs> this is going to write its own jokes. <laughs> All right, let's check out Sandy. Hello, and how are you today? What did I you do bully in a lollipop, uh, man. <laughs> you want your stick back? Oh, give me my stick back, please. You're accustomed to the open air life. You must always be in uniform. You must have the hat on and the coat and carrying... And you can't have your tad to Put it away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care if you use it as a sundial to tell the time. <laughs> You'll hunt into the centre of the road, raise the stick, they are actually telling him his job, despite the fact he's clearly been... Did you see that lorry? Can we, can we... Is there any chance we can rewind to that lorry again, just quickly? Just very, very quickly. There's always been a mystery as to where Hitler's gone. <laughs> Hitler! <laughs> Uh, we'll translate that. There's been a car stolen. He'll try to head off the stolen vehicle. Go ahead, 25. Whiskey over. I reference the unlawful removal. We've stated this. Is this the stolen car? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's a good thing they knew it was going to be there. <laughs> Imagine that had been in 3D. <laughs> oh, God, it's my dad. <laughs> This was actually part of an Aberdeen heist movie called Scone in 60 Seconds. <laughs> Whiskey, we are now behind this vehicle in East North Street, travelling towards King Street, over. Roger, you be to stand by. Uh, hello, uh, we think this car might be going as fast as 13 miles an hour. <laughs> Don't be mad, Davy. There's no type of speed like that. <laughs> it's still most open. Oh, it's kicking off. Right. Oh, he's off. Go, 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 go. Yes. <laughs> well, that was. He's not putting up much of a fight at all, is he? I've let myself down. I've let the primary school down. <laughs> Bad boys, bad boys, what, what you gonna, gonna do? What, what you gonna, gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. Calling UB, Bravo 25, over. Go ahead, 25, whiskey, over. Calling UB, reference. I've got the car now. I don't know who we're gonna get to. We'll leave or call this an official stushy quashed. What about the car? Units, it's Aberdeen's car now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by for cancellation of circulation. Right, well, uh, now there's no more trouble. Uh, any minute now, I'm going to get on the B-52s. <laughs> and now, here's some love shack. This is for Denise. <laughs> it's an understanding it's your golden win anniversary today. A shame your husband's been dead 40 years. This is, this is for you, Denise. I hope you like this one. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was Around Scotland. <laughs> I loved that. I'd watch that all the time. <laughs> and now Taggart's gone, it's all we've got. 
Uh, what did you think of that, boys? That's my favourite one. That's my favourite one. So, uh, when I say favourite one, my favourite TV show of all time. <laughs> it's not even Game of Thrones. I think we should just make, uh, remake everything in Aberdeen. Yeah. <laughs> my heart is just like pounding like a jackrabbit. I just... Oh, like, just imagine that. The walking deed. <laughs> Breaking tablet. <laughs> It's the condensed milk in this. In the van, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. All right, guys, it's over to you, though. You've got to decide, do we save this and put it in the end of day's capsule or do we fire it into the apocalypse? Uh, give us a cheer if you want us to save it. <laughs> Future generations may be saved with the law enforcement. And boo, if you don't think, if you think we just throw it into the apocalypse. We've got ourselves our first one in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The future of Scotland's law enforcement is safe. The streets are safe to walk again, providing you haven't stolen stovies <laughs> and you can't run faster than one of those police cars. <laughs> right, this is a trailer from a horror drama based in Scotland in July 1983 when a rabid cat is smuggled into Britain. The spread of disease goes unnoticed. That is until the first human falls victim to the terrible mad death. Horror has come home. Here's a trailer from the Mad Death! Pet owners. There's nothing to fear. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Rabies is a killer. Let's do it. Oh God! <laughs> All animals to be shot on sight. I'm not shooting my fucking horse. <laughs> Missed him. Down. You missed them. You missed them. It's the harshest episode at Animal Hospital I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I don't even like milky bars. <laughs> Alsatians are scared of shoes. Quick! There's a squirrel in that forest. <laughs> Having a fight with the dog. Bloody hell! <laughs> Did someone just shove a dog in someone's? What are they doing? Hey, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> one more time! I want to see that one more time! Can I, can I honestly see that end bit one more time? The thing against the windy? That was amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's just nice to see John Menzies again. <laughs> <laughs> John Menzies, get some opal fruits, you know. Oh, oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> I always wondered what Sweep did after Sooty stopped being on the tent. <laughs> I swear I could actually watch that all day. Not even the whole film, just that bit. Spring watch after dark. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Mad Day! Oh, give us me. <laughs> All right, we're going to go over to you guys. Uh, if you think we should save... That's a phrase I never thought I'd say. If you think we should save the Mad Death, <laughs> give us a cheer. If you think we should turn it into the fiery pit of hell, it's the only way to get rid of rabies. Give us a boo! The mad death is safe! <laughs> I think doctors for the future will, will thank us. Because that's an a, a important medical document. <laughs> There's one bit in that trailer, did it suggest that um, a guy Gave a lady rabies by shagging her. <laughs> Did anyone else catch that bit towards the beginning? Imagine that would be because it was like a guy lying on top of the woman, and then the next scene was her foaming at the mouth. I'm assuming foaming at the mouth. Like. <laughs> Either way, she did not look happy about it. No. <laughs> All right. Up next, a roaming food reporter takes to the streets of 1970s Edinburgh <laughs> <laughs> to ask the people, "Do you believe in aphrodisiacs?" Well, I believe in aphrodisiacs. I just wouldn't let my daughter marry one. Are 
Do you believe in hot dogs? <laughs> Listen, I am rock hard right now. Oh yeah, it's do you believe in aphrodisiacs? Oh my god, that guy's a Are you joking? Oh no, her fanny was shown shut in 1984. Listen, you've got to be careful with these things. It was during rationing. You got your hole twice a year and you're happy with it. <laughs> For what, I had a gobble, I needed a stamp. <laughs> oh yes, we had sex once, hot my ears. Her hats get the mad death. <laughs> oh my god, it's the queen. <laughs> and this is Scotland's first gay person. <laughs> <laughs> Sadness in its eyes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the food program. <laughs> so, what we discovered there is that people in Scotland don't actually know what the word aphrodisiac <laughs> means. <laughs> uh, have you? Do you believe in aphrodisiacs? What would you use? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, what would you count as an aphrodisiac? Well, according Maybe to them, I eat aphrodisiacs, I'm not, I'm not aware of it. They, according to them, honey. Every time I eat Cocoa Pops, I have a wank. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we owe the travel lodge money for that. <laughs> <laughs> never! <laughs> we'll never be allowed back in Asda Cafe again. <laughs> IKEA said their meatballs were free. <laughs> Do you think the food programme doing the important work of taking to the streets of Edinburgh to find out if people believe in aphrodisiacs? Do you think we should save it? Give it a cheer! Do you think we should doom it to the fiery depths of the apocalypse? Give it a boo! boo. <laughs> oh my, well, you know, shagging has been outlawed in Scotland <laughs> for quite some time. I believe we're full. <laughs> so, um, I think that boo was just for Edinburgh, to be fair. <laughs> Why didn't they come to Glasgow? We're dirty. <laughs> <laughs> just, what do you mean, everybody? <laughs> I believe in aphrodisiacs. Watch, come here. <laughs> Get off! <laughs> I eat bacon while I'm shagging. <laughs> According to the audience, we are putting it in to the apocalypse. It does not survive. So, there we go. Listen, have you ever wondered about the legitimacy of astrology and the science behind it? Said no one in Scotland ever. <laughs> well, this is a TV show from 1988, a high-spirited panel show called High Spirits. I'll level with you. I'm gutted. First of all, I thought this was a DIY show. <laughs> <laughs> For giants. <laughs> Stoners. <laughs> Turns out it's not another sort. This is uh, a panel show from 1988. This is High Spirits. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Earth, wind, fire, period. <laughs> and you just thought BBC's Hogmanay show was bad now? <laughs> Do you think that guy in yellow is like, oh, what are you up to after work? Uh, five asides. Five asides. <laughs> at the heart of the world lives the spinner of threads, whose lifelines weave their stories through the myriad forms of nature. What are you saying? <laughs> there in the crucible of time, their past and future... Are Look at me, I'm stirring an invisible the pot of stories. <laughs> there, we're all as silent. The singing stars make symphonies of How was work tonight, sweetheart? There in the darkness. Oh, I just hung out with a bunch of other people in multicolored tracksuits. Oh, where is that there. demon Pazazu? <laughs> <laughs> well, usual Wednesday. Since the dawn of time, humanity has symbolized the mysteries of life. How did the thing go on the, the telly, Dana? The there is no Dana. Only Zoom! <laughs> That's a swastika! That's a swastika! That's a swastika! That's how it starts. That's how it starts. Four seasons. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that, that was High Spirits. <laughs> Which is like every travel and theatre team that came to your school when you were wee. <laughs> Hey kids, today we're going to do a play on drugs. Yes! Uh, what do you think about that? Well, uh, speaking as a Scorpio, 
Don't give a fuck about astrology. <laughs> so. Wait, Are is astrology... Astrology is the bullshit one, right? Yeah, astronomy is the real one. Okay, I'm just checking. All right, <laughs> All right the stars. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm forever changed, you know? Like, I'm, I'm, I, I want to join this, you know? You're quite easily influenced. I hope nobody gives you a leaflet for ISIS. <laughs> Gonna give, give me that leaflet back. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, it's over to you. What do you think? Are we saving high spirits? Give us a cheer. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Future generations, they're gonna think, oh, that's what Scotland was like. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, are we doing it? Give us a boo. Oh, that's a close one, but I think somehow, unbelievably, future generations are going to watch High Spirits is Saved! Yes! <laughs> Up next, it's a bit of a legendary TV show from Scotland called Super Scott. It's a game show hosted by news reporter Jane Franchi. Challenges this week, contestants to find the person that knows the most about Scotland and her people. This show unbelievably ran from 1983 to 1992. <laughs> exactly. They stopped making push pops, but they were still making this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Super Scott. Oh my God. It's a spectrum loading. <laughs> <laughs> It's just music that brings excitement, doesn't it? No, yeah. uh, it's okay. Super Scott. The worst Avenger. <laughs> Scotland, 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 Scotland. I might as well be the team tune. Hello, it's great to be back with a new series of Super Scott and a chance to meet some really Super Scots, our contestants. <laughs> oh, we've got some new games and plans this year, and we've adapted some of the old favourites, but the aim's the same, to find the person who knows most about Scotland and her people. The overall winner takes home the coveted right, Super the Scott size of that brooch. Trophy. <laughs> that's got that brooch. by Alison Kinnaird. <laughs> you just won our brooch. Weeks away. <laughs> this is a first round contest. If you take so that brooch, it's she this week's four <laughs> Super Scott hopefuls, <laughs> starting with Steve Collier from Mid Calder. Hello, Steve. Hello, Jane. You're a vat man. I am, yes. Is that a, a whiskey type vat man. or a tax type vat? A tax type vat. Oh, she you just called him a fat rider. A fat rider. You're a fat rider, aren't you, Steve? <laughs> oh, Steve, you're a shambles. Tell us about that. Moving on to our. Moving on, because I've got nothing to talk to you about. Anne is from Cumbernauld. Moving on to my mum. I work with community service volunteers as a project organiser. It's Leo Sayers. For young people who've been in residential care. So she works with children in care. Pretty Problems. much going, make something um, funny about that, newsreader cow. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Super Scott. And moving on to Jimmy McIntyre. Jimmy is a butcher, and I've been done. Jimmy! <laughs> Do you have um, all your fingers? All ten. <laughs> well, you already win what an award for your hands? butcher. I know to have all ten <laughs> fingers. Tell me what you do when you're not being a butcher, Jimmy. I uh, enjoy golf and cuddling for pleasure. Cuddling? And are you very good at it? For pleasure. Cuddling for pleasure? Did he say cuddling for pleasure? Uh, cuddling? Course, As opposed to not... Oh, he said cuddling, I beg your pardon. Cuddling for pleasure. I like to cuddle for pleasure. Some most people cuddle for hatred. Peter Manson. Peter is from Cooper. And he's a contractor. Oh, hey! Oh, dear, dear. And what do you do? What do, you do I am Scotland's friend? only porn <laughs> star. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's four Super Scots. And it's like, which of these men will kill me? <laughs> So what they're doing is they're uh, tasting yes, fish here. Yes. <laughs> oh, a brave so man can is guess what type himself. of fish it is. As right. Scots do. Now I can tell you all on, Steve. that all the tastes of Scotland this week are fish, are varieties of fish, but I need their name. <laughs> Attention. Is that mackerel? It's not mackerel, no. Oh, for fuck's sake, fuck Steve! Loser! His oh, dad is a homegrown loser! Loser! <laughs> rather heavy weather of that, nice. Michael. You're nice. a shambles! <laughs> that was technically <laughs> treason in no, Scotland. No, it's not either. No, a trout. Of course it's a trout, you and fucking so, asshole! I'm sure Steve <laughs> will do the honours. Imagine getting that wrong. I realise... Put on the set. They've only got one mask. The <laughs> so we actually got this off an Air Another Scotia kind flight. Another fish for you, Anne. <laughs> Lift, lift it up with my fingers. Why not? Nobody's watching. <laughs> Sick bun! Sick bun, you with your fishy fingers. Herring is right, yes. And she got it right, fuck you, Steve. You're a shambles, Steve. 
<laughs> and that was Super Scott, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what did you think of that, guys? Super Scott? I, I kind of feel like I wish it was still going. <laughs> Imagine when they did the, the porridge swimming championships. <laughs> What other tests were on it? Like we well, only it was, saw a little excerpt, but uh, was it all fish taste testing? Or? Can you unwrap a Tunnox tea cake with your feet? <laughs> <laughs> can, can you shout at a policeman and then blame your pal? <laughs> can you can you fart in the bed and make your wife sick? <laughs> can you shoot up smack using only a traffic cone? <laughs> None of these are on here, <laughs> just, just in case. Uh, all right, guys, uh, it's not, but I, I think the time, all these reboots, do we think it's time to bring back Super Scott? If you do, give us a cheer. Yay! If you think we need to put it into the fires of the apocalypse, give us a boo. Yay! Super Scott's back, baby. Yay! Well. I hope that future generations will keep that going and we'll be able to taste the difference in seasoned fish, <laughs> which realistically nobody can do. They fucking guessed. All right, we've gone through some of the bad stuff and uh, now it's time for a little bit of sugar, something we're definitely sending to future generations. This is from a TV show called Pulp Video. It's a look back at the sketch show which stars some... Chewing the Fat stars and some still game stars. So it's a spiritual successor to Naked Video. There's a few famous faces in here. Can you guess who they are? Let's have a look. We're not making fun of this one. Hi there, it's me, Larry Logan here, and welcome to my show. Oh, sorry, did I say my show? I did, of course, mean your show. I'm with you for the next few hours, so lie back and pour yourself a nice cool drink of that fabulous cocktail they call Chit Chat and Great Music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, our first letter tonight is from a young lady from Invergary. Been there, loved it, bought the tammy. <laughs> dear Larry, oh, I do love it when they say dear Larry. Stay, dear Larry, thanks ever so much for playing the wonderful love song I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston for me last week. My boyfriend became so emotional, he actually wet himself. Oh, well done, keep up the good work. Okay. <laughs> Now another letter here from Joanne and Oban, great people in that part of the country, and she writes, Dear Larry, I listen to your show every night and think you're marvellous. Oh, get away, I've got a pure beamer now, so how about statement, right? <laughs> now, my husband is now also an avid listener, and he says he's absolutely positive you're the same Larry Logan he went to school with. Oh, there you go. And he asks, Larry, do you remember drinking snake bite and getting off with Davy Fitzpatrick at the school dance? <laughs> And this week's loving memory section is from Mary in beautiful Argyle, and she's written an absolutely beautiful and moving letter about her husband, Trevor. Let me read you it. Quite recently, my husband, Trevor, was involved in a terrible accident. Oh, my, sorry to hear that. <laughs> I had just finished whipping up some cream in the kitchen, and he began, as he often does, to lick the cream from the whiskey machine. Yum, yum, I do that myself sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Being a bit of a practical joker, I decided to switch the machine back on, <laughs> which resulted in Trevor having his tongue ripped savagely from his mouth. Despite extensive surgery, doctors were unable to help and unfortunately Trevor could no longer speak. Despite this, we have remained together and would be grateful if you could play True Love by Cliff Richard for us both. Well, a beautiful letter there. Unfortunately, we haven't actually got the track you asked for, but here's another Eclipse classic, especially for you, Mary and Trevor. It's We Don't Talk Anymore. <laughs> That's all for the Apocalypse Archive for tonight. Please thank my special guest. Big round of applause for Neil the Wee Man Brad's piece of yes. the best album, well ladies and gentlemen. Yay! I've been Billy Kirkwood. Join me next time when we will continue to go through all the archives to find what we are sending into the future with TV Apocalypse. Goodbye! To be super Scott, what's this the taste of? Mmm, is that salmon? No, mate. It's a mad death! <gasps> oh! <laughs>